Welcome to the final part of my Pokemon anime review. In part 3 I've talked about the first season, which is the longest of the series. Now in the last part I'm going to talk about season 2, the Orange Island Saga. But instead of talking about a couple of episodes like in the third part, I'm only going to do a few episodes. So let us begin with Pokeball Peril. In this episode, Ash and his friends arrive at Valencia Island to meet Professor Felina Ivy, who along with three assistants are Pokemon breeders. It also features the appearance of the so-called mysterious Pokeball called the GS Ball. And of course, Brock stays and we won't be seeing him for a while, folks. Next, the Lost Lapras. This is where we get to see Tracy Sketchit, a Pokemon watcher. Plus, this is the second time Ash encounters a Lapras. He did happen to see one in Holiday Hijinks, and in this episode, Ash catches one. Pikachu revolts. Ash arrives on Mandarin Island where the Pokemon started hating their trainers, including Pikachu, Togepi, and Meowth, who are being controlled by Drowsy, and the one who is behind this are the return of Cassidy and... I forgot his name again. Buzz, right? Uh, the name is... Whatever! Thanks, Mario! There's a scene where Jesse, James, Cassidy, and Butch, whoa, I got his name right, fighting against each other's mottos. You're the ones who should prepare for trouble. Uh, you two don't even know how to say the motto. You've just made your trouble double. I'm the one who has the next line. To protect the world from devastation. To infect the world with devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To blind all peoples in every nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. The goodness of truth and love. Reach to the stars above. Wrath to the stars above. Jesse Cassidy. James. Butch. Team Rocket blast off at the speed of light. Team Rocket circling Earth all day and night. Surrender now or prepare to fight. Surrender to us now or you'll surely lose the Fight. The Crystal Onyx. This is where we get to see another Pokemon from the Johto region, Meryl. Oh, and Ash helps two people search for the Crystal Onyx. Yes, folks, an Onyx made of crystal. Plus, Meowth breaks the fourth wall, telling the camera to pan down. Hey, down here! I'm down here! And one of the characters tell a tree joke. You just pretend you're a tree and leave! Ooh, funny! Who told you that one, Professor Oak? In the pink. This is a weird one. All the Pokémon on Pink and Island are all pink due to the fruit they eat. The Joy of Pokémon. Ash meets Nurse Joy, but unlike the other Nurse Joys, this one has dark skin and HOLY SHIT! She just lifted a Magikarp! Man, she must be pretty strong. But wait, aren't Magikarp 2 foot 11? But in the Orange Islands, they're gigantic. Man, Orange Island sure is weird. A ship full of shivers. A 300-year-old trophy has been stolen from the museum by none other than... That's right! As soon as they're about to escape with the trophy, a ship appears out of the fog, which is in fact haunted. Haunted? Yeah! <laughs> this was yet the second time Meowth communicates with humans by a Pokémon, like in the episode Tenacool and Tenacruel. For centuries, we have guarded the Orange Island League Championship trophy you see there. It was really nice to explain the history on the Orange Island League. Meowth rules. This is another episode focusing on Meowth where the natives worshipped him as their ruler, and he's living the good life. This is the second time Meowth battles Onyx, also the first time battling Nido King, and we finally learn about James's hobby. A bottle cap. I couldn't live without my most very extra special favorite limited edition vintage bottle cap. I guess he likes it. Tracy gets bugged. In this episode, Tracy catches a Scyther. Also, Misty's fear of bug Pokemon has returned. <laughs> The Mandarin Island Mismatch. This is where we get to see another member of the Elite Four, Lorelei, the water and ice Pokemon trainer. And I must say, she's really hubba hubba hubba. Sorry, folks, got a little carried away. Anyway, she was never called Lorelei because she had too many syllables in her name stated by four kids. So they decided to call her Prima, aka Kana, in the original Japanese version. Also in the original, there's a 25 second scene being cut out when this episode was dubbed. Bound for trouble, Ash and his friends arrive on an island full of giant Pidgeot and Rhydon. The plot in this episode is similar to the movie The Defiant Ones. There's a scene where Meowth stated that he does not have a nose, just like in the episode Pokemon Sensation. You say you can smell Pokemon? Yeah, well I don't smell anything. Blah! I just remembered I don't have a nose! 
What also annoys me is this. I mean, how many times have you seen that lately? A lot, and I think it's starting to get pretty old, as if Team Rocket couldn't come up with any ideas for another trap. Charizard chills. In this episode, Charizard finally listens to Ash. We even get to see a montage of Charizard when he was a Charmander using clips of episodes from Season 1. Ash even admits that he wasn't that of a great trainer, which is basically true, but he becomes a more mature trainer. The Wacky Watcher. Ash and his friends help a Pokemon Watcher by the name of Quincy T. Quackenpoker, who dedicated his life to study on Magikarp, which is another episode that is a tribute to Magikarp. And the way Quack and Poker talks, he sounds like Dr. Zoidberg from Futurama. A skilled people watcher. Say, now that the plot's come to a screeching halt, why don't I take a look at your sketchbook? But you know what? This guy seems to be the equivalent to the famous comedian, Groucho Marx. Then we come to the two episodes where Ash arrives at Pumelo Island and begins his battle with Drake, the Orange Island League champion. In Hello Pumelo, this is the first time Ash had a 6 on 6 Pokemon battle. In Enter the Dragonite, some of the characters mention levels, which is rare in the anime. I just hope Charizard's at a high enough level to beat Electabuzz. This one's level is higher than I thought. Gee, haven't heard that since the episode School of Hard Knocks. It was also nice to see Dragonite once again. Oh, and Jesse breaks the fourth wall as well. How dare you interrupt this competition? We are finished yet! And finally, near the season two finale, guess who comes back? Go on, take a guess. <sighs> Surprise! Is that you, Ash? Huh? Uh. That's right, our favorite Pewter City gym leader has returned. But wait, wasn't he supposed to be back on Valencia Island with... Don't mention that name! Never mind then. Oh yeah, guess who's also in this episode, folks? Gary? That's right! And Meowth touches Nidoqueen's rock-hard boobies. Well, I hope you enjoyed my four-part review of the Pokemon anime. It's been a very long time revisiting the first two seasons. I stopped watching that show during the Hoenn region, and I did skip the entire season where Ash was at the Sinnoh region. And did I ever came back to watch this anime again? Yes, where Ash is at the Unova region. In conclusion, this is a very fun series to watch. The first season was the best, and as for the second season, The Orange Island Adventures, it was kind of a weird one. So until then, folks, this ends my 50th review. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go on my Pokemon journey. And as always, I shall see you all next time.